Tonight, more than a million people ordered to stay home to save us from a citywide lockdown. Cases, exposure sites explode across the suburbs, but have we finally found the link? A young boy pulled alive, but dozens more buried in the ruins of an apartment block. The affair, the pregnancy and allegations of assault, the Ben Robert Smith case turns personal. And the Blues in lockdown, how COVID will affect their Origin 2 preparations. This is Nine News with Alison Lang. Good evening. Four local government areas from Watsons Bay in the north to La Perouse in the south are just hours away from going into a week-long lockdown. The government putting a stay-at-home order in place to stop the virus spreading even further across Sydney. A usually defiant Premier could no longer hold her nerve, plunging the eastern suburbs and CBD into a seven-day lockdown. We don't want to see this situation linger for weeks. We would like to see this situation end sooner rather than later. As of midnight tonight, stay-at-home orders will be in place for Waverley, Wallara, Randwick and the City of Sydney councils. It's not just if you live there, but if you work full-time in any of these areas, you are in lockdown until next Friday, the 2nd of July. I don't live in those areas, but I work there and have done so in the last fortnight, so therefore I'm captured uh, by that stay-at-home order. More than a million people told to stay inside as the Bondi cluster continues to grow. Advice given to Gladys Berejiklian this morning after Delta was transmitted in multiple locations and contact traces couldn't keep up. The quickest way we're going to bring this under control most quickly is by taking this course of action. Otherwise, we risk threads um, establishing and that we grumble along. The rules are the same as previous lockdowns. Shopping for food or essential goods is allowed. Compassionate care or visiting an intimate partner. Medical care, including vaccinations. And essential work and education, which you can't do from home. This is really to make sure that we can prevent further spread, prevent further dislocation. From Piermont to Bondi, Watsons Bay to La Perouse, life will drastically change for a week. It's takeaway only at restaurants and pubs, and like most venues, the fortune of war in the rocks will close altogether. We've got a lot of perishable goods that will go in the bin tonight, and the most gripping one is obviously the staff. We've got to lay staff down again. It has the feel of March 2020. Outdoor exercise is permitted up to groups of 10. So while gyms will shut, smaller classes can still go ahead, but outdoors. Obviously they're devastated um, that they can't come into the gym. This is, this is their place, it's what they like to do. Even though most major shopping centres and stores have announced they will close, retail shops can strictly remain open, as well as medical centres, pharmacies and supermarkets. No one's checking in, no one's making people check in and it's chaos. But there's already a rush on at Woolies and Coles. Madness, absolute madness. Please don't panic buy, no need for that. You can go out and buy anything you need. But strangely, weddings and funerals can still go ahead. We've been on this journey for 16 months and by far the majority of our community comply with the orders. If you need to go in and out of the city or eastern suburbs for essential work, that is permitted. Only people who regularly work in the CBD or east need to stay home, not the people that live with them. But police will be enforcing it, with patrols at the airport, Anzac and Harbour Bridges. Take it as granted that we will, we absolutely will, uh, have our police out and about Kids and community sport in the east is off, while competitions all across Sydney have been suspended. Shoot Shield Rugby has been postponed. Tomorrow's races at Randwick have been moved to Rose Hill. Sydney really is now east and west. On that side of the road here at Newtown, it's the inner west council, so the pubs and restaurants are fine to be open. Then just a couple of strides across King Street, this is the city of Sydney, and at midnight tonight, it will be in lockdown. And with no warning, a week's work is out the window. And for casual staff, a week's wages. The staff don't get paid uh, for lockdowns. There's no certainty for those guys. So, you 
you know, there has to be some sort of government support. While people in isolation can apply for $1,500 cash through Centrelink, federal financial payments for lost work will kick in from next Wednesday. But until then, staff are on their own. Kerry Chant promising this lockdown won't be in place a day longer than it needs to be. If over the next three or four days we see that the situation is much more promising, we certainly will be providing that advice to government. Chris O'Keefe, Nine News. Ruth Wynne Williams joins us now in Coogee. Ruth, what are you seeing there? Well, Ali, right now this lockdown is having the opposite effect. We are just seeing so many people out and about on the streets of Coogee. And that's brought concern from many about just what they're seeing inside our supermarkets. No one's checking in, no one's making people check in. Yeah, toilet paper's all gone. It's chaos. Absolute chaos. I've got to go home and have a few beers. And while buying food is an essential activity, buying houses is not. All open homes are cancelled in the eastern suburbs this weekend. And so for now, the big hot property will remain toilet paper. Ali? All right. Thank you, Ruth. Well, the CBD and East are going into lockdown, but tonight the outbreak is stretching right across the city. All but one of the cases have now been linked as contact tracers race against the spread of this virulent COVID strain. The wash down before the lockdown. Can you fill them up with water for me? Four cleaners meticulously doused the Tropicana Cafe in Darlinghurst and a note from staff on the door ending stay safe. Many workers unfortunately who are face to face with a number of clients during the day have also been transmitting the virus. Deep cleaning also underway at Crown Hair in Darlinghurst, Michael's Charcuterie in Double Bay and Della Fontaine at Potts Point as the list of exposure sites swept across the city in Alexandria, Bankstown, Gregory Hills, Parramatta, Marylands, North Sydney and Casula, the site of a previous outbreak. It just starts all over again and we just like started to get our freedom back really. Even though most of the cases have been in and around the southeast and the CBD, that many workers come from around uh, the Greater Sydney area into those places and unfortunately those workers once infected are passing it on. 22 new cases in total from more than 47 and a half thousand tests but the cluster will grow. Tonight text messages received warning of a positive case at a wedding at Dalton House in Sylvania Waters attended by 200 people on Sunday and contact tracers are tracking down 900 customers from Joe Bailey's salon that may have been exposed. We have at least three staff members who were working whilst infectious and with two confirmed cases amongst clients so far. We've stuck to every single coronavirus protocol. We couldn't have been more stringent, but somehow the sneaky little virus got in. Seven more cases linked to the West Hoxton party, meaning more than half in attendance are now COVID positive. Of course, that party is some distance. We're hoping that everyone was fully in isolation and therefore posed no further risk to the community. In Homebush, these lines stretch not for testing, but vaccines. Wait times, well over an hour, the outbreak, injecting life into injecting lines. More than two million doses have now been administered in New South Wales. Right at the moment, any vaccine in an arm is better than none, whether it's AstraZeneca or Pfizer. To some degree, our arms are tied behind our back when there's just insufficient vaccine supply to be able to get it out. The Canterbury Bulldogs will be without three players next week, deemed close contacts after visiting a Bondi pub on Sunday night. Complacency, there isn't a place for it amongst the league players um, because it, it could threaten uh, you know, the rest of the season. So, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. More testing lines in Norellan, Preston's, Bondi and Double Bay. More testing times still to come. And Charles Croucher joins me now in the studio. Charles, a number of new sites have just been listed. There are, Ali. Of most concern, though, is the Lotus Restaurant at Barangaroo. Anyone there between 12.30 and 3 on Sunday afternoon is asked to get tested 
isolate and stay isolated. Other sites exposed on Monday include a cafe and chemist at Double Bay, Woolworths and BWS at Cecil Hills, the Urban Grind Cafe at Chipping Norton, the Woolies at Ramwick, the Coles at Zetlin and David Jones at Burwood. That would make people casual contacts at those sites. Then there's the T2, T4 and T5 train lines at various times throughout the day on Monday. 12 trips in total. 9news.com.au has those details. Boy, boy, it's a long list, isn't it? It is. Thank you, Charles. Well, just over a week ago, a limousine driver tested positive. Tonight, more than a million people are heading into lockdown. Liz Daniels explains just how the outbreak has spread so fast. Patient zero for the Bondi outbreak is believed to be that limo driver whose infection is thought to have come from an international flight crew he transported from the airport. He first passed it to a household contact and then a woman at the Bell Cafe in Vaucluse. A trip to Bondi Junction Westfield triggered a string of new cases including a man infected within seconds across the eastern suburbs nail salons gyms restaurants and cafes were all points of spread the most concerning the joe bailey hairdresser the seating also extended across sydney the birkenhead point outlet in dromoyne the salvos store in tempe and a birthday party in west hoxton where 17 of 30 guests are now COVID positive. That's how we ended up here. Day nine of the Bondi cluster and it totals 65 cases. In comparison, the Crossroads Hotel cluster had reached 51 by this point. The Northern Beaches cluster was at 119. The key though, Ali, all but a small handful of cases have been linked. OK, thanks for that, Liz. Well, 800 kilometres northwest of Sydney, the town of Burke, immune until now, is getting a little taste of COVID alarm. Tiny fragments of the virus detected at the local sewage plant. Locals are using a pop-up drive-through testing clinic while hoping it's a false alarm. Hopeful that the uh, sample that's taken on the weekend will prove negative for us and we can just carry on with life. The sewage plant services a population of around 2,000 people. 99 people are tonight missing under rubble in Florida, an increasingly desperate search underway for any survivors at a horrific building collapse near Miami. One person has been confirmed dead as devastated families wait for news. And as we go to air, Australians are also feared to be amongst the victims. 12 stories gone in 12 seconds. Inside these homes were dozens of people. Many of them were sleeping when just after 1am their apartments crumbled without warning. I found out that my nephew was here with a wife and three small children. Two, six and nine. I don't even know if family and friends are okay at the moment right now. The first rescue mission found two survivors, one of them a boy whose hand was spotted by a dog walker reaching out from the rubble. I saw an arm sticking out of the wreckage um, and he was screaming, you know, can you see me? You know, he was just screaming, don't leave me, don't leave me. Neighbours were pulled from their balconies using cherry pickers. I just started seeing people in the balconies with the flashlights of their phones asking for help. They were like desperately uh, yelling. Before the horror was made clear in the daylight. The building looks like a, a stack of IHOP pancakes, except they're made out of concrete. A bunk bed last night inside, now visible from the street. Sniffer dogs joined search crews as the hours ticked by. <laughs> Beneath the block, rescuers used the parking garage to tunnel upward. Risking their own safety, the crews use listening devices so powerful they can hear the ticking of a watch. We have uh, cameras that we can bore holes into slabs of concrete and put into other small void spaces in order to see, you know, around corners and in small areas also. Officials say it isn't clear what caused the collapse. Built in 1981, this building isn't old. In fact, it had just begun its 40-year inspection process. There was also construction happening on top of the building, but they're unsure if that played a part. It's less likely than a lightning strike. It, it just doesn't happen. You don't see buildings falling down in America. The apartments were built alongside a famous stretch, Miami Beach. Normally Florida's playground, now it's ground zero, where dozens of families tonight hold out hope. My mom is an absolutely amazing person. She's a fighter and she fights for every single one of us and we won't stop until we won't stop fighting until we find her. 
Australian Joseph Wax lives in the neighbourhood. Do you worry about the safety of your own building? Yes, yes, and I think there is a lot of people that are asking questions and we're going to demand answers. DFAT is making urgent inquiries to determine whether any Australians were involved. The man and the woman are from uh, Sydney and then uh, moved to Melbourne. A few hours before that, one of his children had a child and it was a happiness in the family and now it's just absolute devastation. I cannot imagine. Florida's governor has declared a state of emergency, receiving help from the federal government to continue to search for survivors. I say to the people of Florida, whatever help you want that the federal government can provide, we're waiting, just ask us, we'll be there. Gee, it's grim. And US correspondent Alison Petrowski is at the search site in Surfside, Florida. Ali, what's the focus for rescue teams right now? Well, good evening, Ali. Rescuers are focusing on something that they call voids, pockets where they think people could potentially survive. They think if someone is trapped in one of these pockets, they could survive for a number of days. So there is still some hope. We are headed into hour 27. It is 4 a.m. here in Miami Beach, Florida. The weather has not been favourable in the last few hours, Ali. Lots of storms and lots of lightning about. And we're also hearing that the uh, members, the family members of those who are unaccounted for, are becoming increasingly frustrated about the lack of information that they're getting here from officials. Ali? That's understandable. Thanks, Ali. Ten people, including five members of the Bandidos Bikey Club, have been arrested in a string of police raids this week on the state's north coast. The targets were homes in Southwest Rocks, Coffs Harbour and Kempsey, as well as in the Hunter Valley. Officers seized firearms, ammunition, drugs and cash. A $250,000 reward has been announced for information into the suspicious disappearance of Sydney-born Marion Barter. The 51-year-old mother of two was last seen at a bus depot in Southport on the Gold Coast in 1997. She'd earlier changed her name to Natalia M Marion Remichel. My mum's bank accounts were uh, accessed by persons unknown to us in Byron Bay and in Burley. Anyone with information should contact Crime Stoppers. Greater movement and less restrictions for those who've been vaccinated. That's the call as we shift how Australia handles future COVID outbreaks. But with states and territories reluctant to agree, the government's trying to find a way out of what Labor claims is a land of lockdown. Back to school. That's great. From quarantine at the lodge. Oh, that is, that is wonderful. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister quizzed on leading the country from isolation. What has and has been the most challenging part of your role? You've got to make sure your team and, and the rest of the country, if you're a Prime Minister, um, can maintain that level of confidence. Trying to boost confidence in quarantine and bring more Australians back home. Writing to state premiers over four possible hubs, but with a locked-in commitment at this stage of only 1,000 extra beds that might not all be available until next year. The problem here is that starting uh, so late, uh, they should have been in place now. This really is about the medium to long term. Right now, the virus is changing life in Sydney. Suburbs are locked down, state borders are closed and restrictions imposed. Staving off death and serious disease is the job of the vaccine. Getting vaccinated is essential to the nation. The Prime Minister wants it to be a green light to more freedoms. Now, the states aren't ready to accept that. And infectious diseases expert Peter Collignon says statewide lockdowns should be a thing of the past. As time goes on and as more people are vaccinated, we need to be more lenient with our restrictions rather than harsher. If history is anything to go by, it's highly unlikely the Prime Minister and state and territory leaders will ever agree on a uniform set of restrictions that could be imposed in the event of future outbreaks. We need to get used to the fact that this virus will be present with us everywhere in the world for many years to come. And the Prime Minister needs to get used to another week in quarantine. I'll be watching Origin on Sunday night. Well, Go the Blues. Jonathan Kersley, Nine News. A lucky break in one way, devastation in another for a man living in a backyard granny flat in the southwest suburb of Busby. He was safely out when a fire destroyed the building overnight but lost all his belongings in the blaze. A neighbour raised the alarm. All this orange ball around the back and then I called the, the fire brigade. The cause of the fire is still to be determined.
Well, let's take a look at today's weather. It's a very good evening to Natalia. Hello. Very good evening to you, Ali. temperatures Sydney really was sparkly our helicopter capturing these pictures uh, maybe not <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see if we can bring them to you later and let's go to this now after a low of 11.6 the city hit the top of a touch under 20 degrees around 3.30 our west had a low of 8.4 before a max of 19.9 we're expecting more sunshine this weekend but there are showers around the corner I'll have all the details later in the <laughs> Thanks, Natalia. Well, next, a pub crawl COVID style. Where with the police squad hitting venues across the city, what are they looking for? Ben Robert Smith's love life under scrutiny in a gruelling day at court. First, it was home insurance, now car premiums are surging. How much more you'll be slugged and what you can do. And a major step for the Queen after the death of Prince Philip.